Of all the videos that I've done so far on probability, video number 21, this one is going to be the most full of really important ideas. In fact, I may even need a second sheet of paper. And I'd highly recommend that you take notes, okay? Get some paper out, be ready to pause the video, write down things that I say and things that I write down, okay? Lots of really big ideas. We're doing a modified problem, three, exercise 3-10 three from Asimo and Maxwell's textbook. We'll be finding the first and second moments of a discrete random variable. Okay, we talked about the first moment in the last video that's also called the expected value or mean of the random variable. After finding its probability mass function, its PMF, using something else that's new here is the idea of a combination. Okay, and actually at the start of the video as I work through the problem, I will assume you know the formula for combinations and work through the problem with that assumption. You may not know it, so toward the end of the video, I will also explain and generalize. I will talk about where the formula comes from. We'll also go to Mathematica, see graphs, and do something else that's new. Uh, I will show you how to do simulations in Mathematica with the random variable to give you some intuition about what's going on. So here's the exercise. You've got a group of 11 people at a party, five men and six women at a party, and you want to randomly choose two of them to go and get some food and drink at the stores. At the store, two party guests chosen at random uh, to go to the store for food and drink. Let W, capital W, is our random variable, denote the number of women selected. Okay, in this group of two people, so that could be zero women, one woman, or two women. W could equal zero, one, or two. All right, here there are three parts. Part A, which is the uh, actually, it's part B that's the main part of the problem in the book, though part A plays into part B. Use the idea of a combination of R items from a group of N items to determine the probability mass function of W. Okay, so this combination, again, I'll assume you know what that is at first, but then I'll explain it later. Uh, and that'll be helpful for part B to determine the expected values E of W and something new, E of W squared. Okay, again, E of W, the expected value of W, is the mean of W. Should be between 0 and 2, right? Because the values of W are 0, 1, or 2. It won't necessarily be a whole number. The expected value of W squared, what is that? I guess that would be the expected or mean number of squared women? Okay, that doesn't make much sense. Uh, why in the world would you want to do something like that? It will be useful for us in later videos when we, when we talk about variance and standard deviation, which are measures of spread of the random variable. That's why that's going to be useful. Those two things are also called the first and second moments of W. Okay, that's the first moment, that's the second moment. Why, did, why are they called moments? It's related to physics ideas. Uh, there's something called a moment of inertia, and the formulas for these things are similar to the formulas that you'll find in physics. But that does still beg the question, why are they called moments in physics? And I'm not quite sure. Kind of a strange name. Finally, part C, explain and generalize the ideas in parts A and B. All ready? All right. Are you ready? Have your paper out. Get ready to take notes. Uh, there's lots for me to write down here and say. Uh, so first of all, we're thinking about part A. The combination of R items from a group of N items. That's called N choose r, okay, and choose r. It's written symbolically in a couple different ways typically. Sometimes you'll see it written like this with an n over an r, kind of like a column vector. It's not a fraction, okay, it's not n divided by r. It's just notation for n choose r. Sometimes also written n c r. C could stand for choose, it could also stand for the word combination, okay. It's the number of groups of R objects taken from a bigger group of N objects, okay? You've got a big, big group of N objects, you're wondering how many group of R, groups of R objects can I take from that bigger group without regard to the order that you are th looking at them in. And the formula for it involves the factorial function. It's N factorial divided by the product of R factorial and N minus R factorial, where the factorial function uh, for example, 5 factorial is by definition 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 720. Going down to 1 factorial, that's just 1. 
Uh, zero factorial, you might think, what is that? That would that should that be zero? It's actually not. It turns out to equal one, and there's a good reason for that, and the reason is it makes the formulas work out nicer. Okay? That's a definition. So we'll need that here to help us solve the problem, at least in the way that I'm doing it. You can solve it actually without the combination. Maybe we'll double check the problem in that way. But this is something that the way we're going to solve it here. <clears throat> So we're, we're thinking about what are the pro what's the probability that w is 0, then 1, then 2. It's going to be helpful to use this idea of a combination to figure out how many possible groups of two people can be chosen overall. Also, how many possible groups of two men could be chosen, and how many possible groups of two women could be chosen, and that will help us solve the problem. Okay, so 11 choose 2. I'll write it this way is going to be the number of ways uh, two people can be picked from this group of 11, irregardless of their, whether they're men or women. The formula would say that's 11 factorial divided by r is 2, 2 factorial times 11 minus 2 factorial is 9 factorial. Now think about this. 11 factorial is 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. In other words, it's 11 times 10 times 9 factorial. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. 11 minus 2 is 9. You already have a 9 factorial on the bottom. You can calculate this without a calculator. This is 11 times 10 over 2. 110 over 2 is 55. There are in With 11 people or 11 objects, there are 55 possible groups of two objects that could be chosen, in this case, two people. Okay. How about the number of possible ways of choosing two men? There are five men. The answer would be five choose two. Five factorial divided by two factorial times five minus two factorial is three factorial. Five factorial is five times four times three factorial. And that's going to cancel with the three factorial on the bottom. So you're left with 20 over two, which is 10. And then how many groups of two women could be chosen? That would be 6 choose 2, 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 4 factorial. 6 times 5 times 4 factorial divided by 2 times 1 times 4 factorial. The 4 factorials cancel, you get 30 divided by 2, that's 15. Okay, so this is the number of total possible groups of 2. This is the total number of groups of 2 men. And this is the total number of groups of 2 women. How about the total number of mixed groups? Total number of mixed groups, think about it, would be 55 minus the sum of these two. Total number of mixed groups. You don't have to think about combinations there. Take the total number of groups of two, these groups of two, minus the sum of the total number of groups of men and the total number of groups of women two men and two women. 55 minus 25, this is 30. Okay, That's the total number of ways of, that you can have mixed groups of two in this problem. All right, now we're ready to calculate the probability mass function based on this. <clears throat> um, I'll go back to calling it little p. Little p of 0 is the probability that capital W equals 0. Think about this here. There's 55 total groups uh, of two people. Having zero women mean, means you have two men. There's 10 possible groups of two men. Assuming the, this is truly a random choice, this probability would be 10 divided by 55. And that, by dividing the top and bottom by 5, would reduce to 2 elevenths. OK, so that's p of 0. p of 1. <clears throat> is the probability that capital W equals 1, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that's going to be the total number of mixed groups of 2 divided by the total number of groups of 2. 30 divided by 55. Divide the top and the bottom by 5, and that reduces to 6 elevenths. Finally, P of 2 is the probability that capital W equals 2. That's going to be 15 divided by 55. And that reduces to 3 elevenths, and you can just glance over these and see very quickly that the sum of those is 11 elevenths, which is 1. Okay?
This is your probability mass function, and um, we can now use it to find these expected values, these moments, first moment and second moment. Again, we talked about the first moment in the last video. Expected value of w, also denoted by mu. Okay, that's another symbol for the mean or expected value. It's a sum of what? It's a sum of uh, the values of w times the corresponding probabilities. In other words, w can be 0, 1, or 2. I'll use a little w here instead of a capital W. Okay, capital letters are reserved for random variables. The corresponding lowercase letters are reserved for their values. Add up the products little w times p of little w. In other words, this is going to be 0 times p of 0, which will, of course, be 0 in this problem, um, because w could be 0, plus 1 times p of 1, plus 2 times p of 2. So that's 0 plus 1 times 6 elevenths, plus 2 times uh, 3 elevenths, gives you 12 elevenths, which is about um, 1.091, turns out. That's 1.09, actually, with the 09 repeating. 12 divided by 11. There you go. All right, <clears throat> that's not a whole number. You shouldn't expect it to be a whole number, pun intended, okay? Even though w has to be a whole number itself, on average, the mean, the long-term average, if you do simulation, doesn't have to be a whole number. Okay, that should make intuitive sense. I mean, you're going to get ones the most. Zeros and twos not equally likely. Okay, so on average, you're not going to get exactly one for an average. You'll get something slightly higher than one because the probability of equaling two is slightly higher than the probability of equaling zero. What about the second moment? The expected value of w squared. The formula for this is the same as the formula for the expected value of w, except replace this w with w squared. Like that. That's a w there. So you'll get 0 squared times p of 0 plus 1 squared times p of 1, <coughs> excuse me, plus 2, 2 squared times p of 2. 0 plus 6 elevenths plus 4 times 3 elevenths is 12 elevenths. The answer is 18 elevenths. 18 divided by 11 is 1.63 with the 6.3 repeating, so about 1.636. Okay? That's on average the value of the number of squared women. Okay? And again, we'll see in future videos, not too far from now, uh, that this is useful for measuring the spread in the distribution of W. Uh, something called the variance is the most basic measure of spread, though it's a little hard to interpret. Something easier to interpret is called the standard deviation of the uh, random variable. That's a little easier, easier to interpret. I think I'm going to be able to fit this all on one page here. I'm using my space wisely here. Um, so that's the first and second moments. Before we generalize, explain and generalize, I should say that in, the, in general, the the kth moment of the random variable is the expected value of the random variable to the kth power, where k could be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, etc. Um, and that'll be a sum in this case, w goes from 0 to 2 of w squared, uh, w to the k power times p of w. Are higher moments useful? Yeah, they end up being useful, especially the third and fourth moment. I'm not sure of applications of higher moments past the fourth moment, although we will talk about something called moment generating functions eventually, where all these ideas can come into play. All right, let's take a breath. Um, explain and generalize. So what I want to do is I want to explain this formula. Oh, I wanted to do one more thing before I do that. I wanted to check these answers in another way. Um, let's do that here next. P of 0, the probability that w equals 0. That equaling 2 elevenths could be checked in another way with the general multiplication rule. Think about it. Okay, you got 11 people, uh, 5 men and 6 women. 
W equaling zero means you didn't pick any women, you only picked men. That means you picked a man with the first person chosen, and you picked a man with the second person chosen. Five men and six women. The probability that the first person is chosen to be a man is five elevenths. Then the conditional probability that you choose a, a man in the second choice, given that you chose a man for the first choice, would be, think about it, four tenths, because there are four men left to pick out of ten people total. This product is 20 out of 110, which is two elevenths. Same answer we got here. Okay, so this can be solved without combinations. You can think about it in a similar way for, say, p, uh, the probability that w equals 2, and then just add these and subtract from 1 to get this one. Okay, I'll leave that to you. All right, what about this formula now? Okay, this is going to get a little theoretical here. The formula for n choose r. So you want to imagine you have n objects, where n is 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, etc., positive integer. So there are n objects. The objects in this case of this problem were people. And you choose r objects, where r is some positive integer smaller than n. Okay? though it actually could equal n itself. And you're wondering, how, in how many ways this, can this be done? We're choosing the objects. The order that we pick them in, or that we put them in, doesn't matter. However, that order that we pick or put them in is going to help us derive this formula, thinking about that ordering. The number of ways of doing this is what I'm calling n choose r, n c r. Again, sometimes written like this. Okay, and I want to say see why it equals this. Okay, um, but let's to help us again derive the formula. Let's imagine um, thinking about order, like I mentioned just a minute ago. Choose and order as a separate problem. Okay, and the number of ways of doing that is called a permutation. I will talk about permutations a lot more in future videos. I guess you can think of this as an in introduction to them. How many ways uh, can that be done? These are our objects, by the way. It's based on something else called the, you might call it the multiplication principle. Yet another concept here. Um, think of it this way. Pretend there are 11 objects, these 11 people, and you're thinking about uh, choosing two of them. There are 11 people that could be chosen for the first choice, but then there are 10 people left to go in the second spot, so to speak, when I'm thinking about actually putting these people in an order. 11 times 10, 110, would be the answer for that. What if you were choosing three people and putting them in an order? You've got 11 for the first choice, 10 for the second, 9 for the third. The product of those, 11 times 10 times 9, would be the number of permutations of three objects, three people, from a group of 11 in this case. In general, this number of permutations, which you could call NPR for permutations, is N times n minus 1, times n minus 2, just like I was thinking about 11 times 10 times 9, etc. How many of these are there? There's going to be r of them, because you're choosing r objects. Look at the pattern here. The first factor is an n minus 0. The second factor is an n minus 1. The third factor is n minus 2. The, the rth factor would be an n minus r minus 1, which is also equal to n minus r plus 1. Okay? So that's one way to think about choosing and ordering our objects. But there's another way that I can think about it that kind of comes from over here. I could first choose the entire group all at once instead of one at a time. There are NCR ways of doing that where I'm not saying what this equals yet. And then once I've got those R objects, I can put them in an order. 
once I've got those R objects, that smaller group, I can put them in an order. N time NCR ways of choosing the entire group. Here I was thinking about ordering them right away. Here I'm not. I'm taking the entire group right away. But once I've got those R objects, how can I order them? How many ways can I put them in an order? I can, uh, I've got R choices for the first slot, R minus 1 for the second, R minus 2 for the third, etc., down to 3 times 2 times 1. Hey, that's R factorial. You can solve this equation for this unknown. Now, divide both sides by R factorial and NCR will be NPR divided by R factorial. That doesn't look the same as this, but they actually are if you think about this expansion of NPR and do a little bit of uh, clever manipulation. This is going to be N times N minus 1 times N minus 2, etc., down to N minus R plus 1 divided by R factorial, but hey, I can multiply by 1 in a disguise form. I can multiply this by N minus R factorial over N minus R factorial. And if I do that, I don't change the value of the expression, and the top becomes, think about it, that becomes N factorial. Right? Okay, try it with examples. Pick N to be 11 and R to be 2, for example and you'll see that it works. That is n factorial. Just It's similar to what I was doing up here when I was canceling the 9 factorials and the 3 factorials and the 4 factorials. Those are playing the role of kind of what I was doing with the sort of uncanceling in this spot here. This simplifies the formula from the top. This is n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. Okay. I just barely made it on my paper. All right, let's go to Mathematica. And first I'll show you some stuff I've already shown you in previous videos, but then I'm going to show you something new. Well, actually there is something new right here right away. In Mathematica, at least, binomial is choose, combination. Okay, Because these things are also called binomial coefficients, that's the reason. So this binomial 6, 2 should be 6, choose 2, which we found to be 15, and it is. That is the same as 6 factorial divided by the product of 2 factorial and 4 factorial. And what I'm doing here is I'm defining my probability mass function in a more general way. This is my generalization for this problem. I'm using these choosings, the, the binomials, again this is essentially 6 choose 2, in the three situations where w equals 0, 1, or 2, to equal these things. These are probabilities. Now what you see in here that's a little weird besides the just weirdness of all these formulas is that I'm also allowing the number of total number of men and the total number of women to be something that I can change. Okay, By putting an M here, that's the total number of men, and a W here, a capital W, that's the total number of women, I'm going to allow myself in Mathematica to make changes to those if I want. Okay, So I'll enter this function. Uh, uh, we had in the problem itself five men and six women, so these are going to be the values of the probability mass function, 2 11s, 6 11s, and 3 11s. Here are the values of, well, first of all, the sum of the probability mass function values, which should be 1, the mean or first moment, uh, the second moment, we should get what we got before, 12 11s and 18 11s, numerical approximations to those, and we can confirm uh, we can actually, oh, this is something different here, we can actually compute the first and second moments in general for an arbitrary capital M and capital W, which again represents the total number of men and the total number of women, and get a formula for it. And we can get a formula for the second moment. You might want to do an exercise and, and check to see if you can get those things. Okay, when for an arbitrary M and an arbitrary W, again, binomial M comma 2, for example, really means M choose 2, this means really m plus w choose 2, which in our problem was 11 choose 2, etc. You should think about why this works. Here's an animation showing the values of the PDF uh, for different capital M and different capital W. Okay, I can change the total number of men and the total number of women, and I get different PMFs. I said PDF, but it's really want to call it a PMF here. 
and I get different means. The blue dot is at the mean, center of mass. When w is zero, you've got no chance, uh, your probability that w equals zero is one. Okay, you got a 100% chance if there are no women, you're going to not pick any women for your group of two. On the other hand, if w is 10, for example, and m is zero, then you've got a 100% chance of w equaling two. Okay, so that should make sense as well. All right, one new thing to do, and that's to show you that you can do some simulation. Um, I'm not going to explain this, but uh, just appreciate what it's telling you. I can define in Mathematica a probability distribution using my PMF here for these values of W, 0, 1, and 2, the, the ones at the end here, because I'm just, it's sort of telling you to step up by one each time. And then I can use something called random variable, ra random variate to do the simulation. This is going to generate data, 10,000 data points, a bunch of zeros, ones, and twos. There they are. Wow, really quick. A bunch of zeros, ones, and twos. These are the data values. Now, they are they should correspond to the PMF. And for example, the probability that uh, W equals one was six elevenths. The the majority of these numbers should be ones. And if you glance over it, it does look like mostly they are ones. Okay. That's the values of the data here. I can also square those values. Data squared, now I get a bunch of zeros, ones, and fours, mostly ones again, uh, because these are squared values of W, okay? 10,000 of those. And I can calculate the mean of both the values of W data, I'm calling it, and the values of W squared, data squared. And these numbers, 1.11 1 approximately and 1.67 approximately, should be close to the, tr the true theoretical means that we found earlier. 1.1 or 1.09, yeah, 1.1 1 .1 if you round it. And then 1.67 we got down there for our data, and this is 1.64, so very close. By the way, if I if I run the simulation again by re-entering random variable, random variable, I will get variate. I will get different data and different means. Watch, these numbers will change now. Yeah, changed ever so slightly. Okay, that's the nature of simulation is you're not going to produce the exact theoretical results, but they confirm that the theoretical results are reasonable. Thanks for watching this long jam-packed video.